All right, I'm getting ready to start my next project. This is a vintage book I picked up um, at a antique store. I think I paid like $3 for it. It's 101 plots used and abused. I don't know, when I bought it, I don't know if I was just like in a morbid mind. I thought they meant like cemetery plots, but it's actually story plots. Um, but they're all like uh, murder mystery story plots. It's actually very fascinating to read through it. Um, I did read a lot of these story plots, so um, I won't, I'm not going to, this is going to be a junk journal in that I'm not going to cover up these pages. Like when you do altered books, you pretty much cover up the original print. I'm not going to do that because these are really fascinating, but I am going to take it apart because it is already falling apart. I'm going to reuse the pages and I'm going to reuse the covers and then I'm just going to add extra pages so it is essentially a journal. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of excited about this one. I love that it has the original, um, public library card. And these are all from like 1949 all the way up to 67. So yeah, I'm going to keep that, keep that, keep as much as I can. Let's see how this seems. So it's a very thin book. This is not even a half inch. So I'm going to add a two inch spine so I can include a bunch of pages for journaling. Um, you know, I'm going to just try to keep a, as much as original as I can. I'm not going to like paint the cover. I might add a couple of embellishments right here. And I am going to add embellishments. It's just not going to be like an altered book that you see me do where everything is painted over because I want to be able to read these stories later on. They are really fascinating. They're just plots for store that I guess is like common. You know what I mean? Like they've been done, done 20 billion times. Kind of like how all the great 80s movies are being redone. Like how Ghostbusters was redone and all the, you know what I mean? So these are all plots that have been done 20 billion times. And it is a fascinating read. And I am going to basically upcycle it because it is in not the best condition. Good morning. I am working on the signatures for my latest junk journal. Um, so I suggest making a template for your signatures so you know what size to cut everything down. So I just take like scrapbooking paper that I will never use and then I write down my measurements because I have a, a cutting uh, pad that has a ruler on it so it makes it's easy to cut stuff down. And so um, for my signatures, I always have the outer layer as a scrapbook paper because you want a thicker paper to support um, your delicate papers inside. And then I also will have one for the last page <clears throat> for your signature. So you want your first page and your last page to be thicker paper um, to protect the delicate papers. <coughs> Sorry about that. So most People, when they do junk journals, they take vintage papers for their signatures. So I have various vintage papers. This is just some vintage sketching paper, some graph paper. It's thinner, some graph paper, different graph papers. And then I have some magazine, not magazine. These are old books. Um, just anything I thought looked good. This is from an old atlas. And you have to cut it down to fit your journal. So you will lose stuff. Um, but... You, it's just about the background. This is going to be covered with um, other ephemera, so it's okay that it's the map is you know missing Canada and etc. Um, because you just want a nice background that's going to be eventually covered. And these are all vintage papers from books and stuff. And <clears throat> let's see what else I got here. This is tracing paper, so it's very delicate. You don't want to have this as your final page. And then some more, oh, and then all my favorite, I got, this is music paper. <clears throat> I have a whole box of music paper that I got at an estate sale. Estate sales are the best, this is upside down. Estate sales are the best for finding vintage papers. And then, um, so my point is, do you notice how like this is, this is horizontal? Um, this is the correct way, but when you put it in your book, you have to flip it over because if you were to do it this way and you fold it, 
it's a lot smaller than what you want your journal to be. And so that's why when you see flip throughs of people's journals, you'll see papers turn the wrong way um, because they're just, that's how it works when you do a sewn signature. You're, full, you're basically, all your signatures are paper folded in half and sometimes it works out where it's gonna be uh, horizontal instead of vertical. So, my point is, um, I lost my point. It's more, it's very early, I'm rambling. So, I want to add the original pages from this book. Remember, this book was 101 plots, and so when I pulled out all the papers, um, they, they're not attached to each other. They, when you pull them apart, they are individual papers. So, if I'm using the sewn method, um, you would fold it in half like this and put it in the book. But I don't want that. I want it to be like this, the correct uh, horizontal way or vertical, whatever. And I've watched a lot of videos and no one really ever talks about what do you do if you want to leave your page like this. And so I thought about it and maybe people use washi tape and tape them together. Um, but I am just using regular paper. This is tie-dyed paper, and so what I did was I have tie-dyed paper, and I just cut a strip, folded it in half, and I'm essentially making a hinge. And then I'm gonna glue it. Um, I'm gonna glue it right here. And I already did this one so you can see. So now they're attached. And now I could do it. I also could do a hinge on this side too to give it extra support, um, but I'm not going to. And then, um, Maybe I will. I don't know. No one ever talks about it. If anyone has any ideas on how they get these pages like this, let me know. So I am just doing this hinge. I don't want to do washi tape. I don't like washi tape. I don't want pattern. I want it to blend in so you don't really realize it's there. So take my glue stick, glue it down here in the corner. Good. I'll add a little extra glue right there. Okay, we're not good. Okay. Now, it opens up and I can add it to my signature. So I want this to be like the first page but then when I open it I want this to be the second page and then like and then you just go through and you stack stack your signatures stack your pages that you want in your signature I have a lot of pages here I'm gonna make three signatures I would I put between six to eight pages in every signature you don't want to make them too fat because then they start um, they get too bulky and so that's why I make three signatures so let's see how many pages do I got and let's add a couple more I kind of like try to do like a pattern paper and then a paper that can be written on and then another pattern paper and then a paper that can be written on if I want to journal you see what I'm saying and then let's see where is my here's my other heavy scrapbook and then that's my final one so then that is my signature. How many pages did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine. I actually went a little crazy that time. I did nine. So let me take one out so I have an even eight. Let's take this one out. I'll put that one in the next signature. So now I have eight pages in my signature. So I'll have three signatures of eight pages. So there you go. And I will eventually corner around the corners. And then this will be the three stitch method where I will be stitching right along here to secure it when I am ready. So um, I'm not gonna show that unless you guys really want me to. There's a lot of videos of people um, showing how to bind it. I think it would be very difficult for me to film it. So, um, it's pretty simple. Just poke three holes, 
um, stitch it with through the three holes, and there you go. Maybe I have done a video on that. I don't know. I gotta think about it. Anyway, I am going to keep working on these signatures. I just wanted to show you how I attach these two pages so I can add it without folding it the wrong way because I'm not always a fan of the paper folded the wrong way.